Welcome, welcome to in person, welcome online. I know it's a cold day today, but that's even more so that we need to stand and dance and move around during our worship service today. Uh, if you're in person, I know we ask that you do not sing. And if you're online, go ahead and sing out. But there's other ways to worship by dancing, clapping, raising your hands. So it's a Super Bowl Sunday. I'm excited for Super Bowl Sunday. But we also have a super Jesus to worship and to praise. Amen. Let's continue in worship.
Well, good morning, and we're so glad that you guys are here this morning in person as well as online. I was actually in between services. I was talking to uh, Pastor Allen, and I was telling him that it's, I'm still getting used to talking to living, breathing individuals, you know, instead of just a kind of a, a camera and stuff, but, but I'm glad that you're here. You know, as we kind of get into the sermon this morning, you know, this, this afternoon, <clears throat> there, you know, in a few hours, an event will, will take place, um, you know, an event that will attract, they say, somewhere over a, a hundred million viewers, both in person as well as, you know, online or, or, or through TV or, or, you know, wherever people may be viewing this. And the participants in this event, they're, you know, really they're all considered, you know, elite, top of their profession. And this afternoon's event will actually determine, you know, who, who's the best in the world. And it'll determine who'll be holding this, this trophy that's named after, you know, the legendary coach, Vince Lombardi, right? You know, so they, they you know, this afternoon that this event, just in case, you know, you didn't know, and Matt talked about it, is, is the Super Bowl. <clears throat> you know, and, and the athletes that'll be participating in this afternoon's game, they, they didn't just get up one morning, you know, and, and find themselves at the top of their profession. You know, and as gifted and as talented as they are, and they all are, I believe, very athletic and talented, it took much more than that to get where they are today. So in preparation for the, you know, the sermon this morning, I, you know, I gave some thought to how these athletes, you know, approach the game, you know, how they approach, you know, their, their craft, you know, the work that was put in, the sacrifices made. And I believe that it's quite similar to how God desires for Christians to live out their lives daily. You know, it's how we should approach faith and what I would call, you know, um, a victorious faith. And so I'd like to spend our time together this morning kind of taking a look at that. And with that said, you know, as we dive in, you know, if you have your Bibles, turn with me <clears throat> to the Apostle Paul's words found in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 27. And I'll read that for us. It says... Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, do not run like someone running aimlessly, do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. You know, these verses, you know, these verses here are, are just some of the Apostle Paul's words to the church in Corinth. Now, this is kind of an FYI thing, but the church, there, it, it was kind of a mess at the time. And, and so this is kind of where, where Paul is kind of, kind of jotting down these things. He, he's, he's thinking through these things. He's, he's writing this letter to this church that is, is perhaps, you know, kind of in chaos at the time. You know, there were issues with, with leaders, the leadership in the church. There, you know, there, was also, there were also theological issues going on. And also basic issues with just loving one another. So this is what Paul is, is dealing with as he's, as he's writing this. And, and his hope here is through, you know, through all of this is the strengthening of the faith, you know, for the Christians at Corinth. 
you know, that they would kind of, they would possess this, for lack of better words, this victorious faith. Now, how does this apply to us this morning? Well, you know, if we want this, if we desire this victorious faith, I believe that these, you know, these traits that we find in these verses this morning, and we'll look at three traits that Paul describes in these verses, that I believe they may prove quite helpful if this is something that we strive for. So let's take a look at the The first is this. <clears throat> You know, having a victorious faith takes purpose. You know, you guys have heard me talk about purpose in the past, and, and, and basically purpose, I believe, is the why. You know, the, the why we exist as individuals, why we exist as, as a church here in Pro City. You know, for other institutions, it would be why does that organization exist? You know, why we're doing what we're doing. Now, I say this because if we don't understand what we're doing or why we're doing it, if we don't believe in it, if, you know, we don't know the why, then when times get tough, and they most certainly will, you know, I've never come across any type of organization or church that, that just was smooth sailing throughout its entire existence. And so when times get tough or uncomfortable without the why, it, it often becomes pretty easy to just throw in a towel and just quit. And the reason is simple, because if there's no purpose to what we're, you know, what we're doing, if we don't know why, then really there's no reason to continue to, to put up with the, the discomfort that one may be going through. And I believe most of us, we, we've been there. You know, we put in extra hours or, or an extra effort. We go without, we, we sacrifice. And we do so because we know that the fruit of our labors, the fruit of our sacrifices, you know, we know what they'll bring. And so those things drive us. And so here in verses 24 and 25, what, you know, Paul lays out the purpose. And and I'll read that again for us, the first two verses that we started out reading. It says this, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? So run in such a way to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do so to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. You see, the purpose here what, what, that Paul talks about truly, I believe, exemplifies the essence of a victorious faith. He says, run in such a way to get the prize. And, and what is that prize? And Paul talks about a crown that will last forever. This crown that Paul is talking about, it's not the wreath, although he kind of alludes to that right before that, you know, this wreath that we see Olympians wear as they stand on the podium. This wreath that perhaps may not last the duration of the games. But rather here, Paul is talking about this this eternal prize that is both the joy of of leading someone to a life-saving relationship with Jesus and the reward of, of God's, God's praise and approval on a, on a race well run, you know, a life well lived. You know, I've heard it put this way. <clears throat> it is the joy of standing next to someone in heaven who is there through the Spirit's use of our testimony as well as the praise of the king who says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You know, this is what Paul is talking about here. This is the why. The goal of a a victorious faith is not only to experience the love of Jesus, but I believe to share it with those who who so desperately need it. 
And when we understand that purpose, it's the first step, I believe, to experiencing a victorious faith. You know, another thing that Paul talks about in having a victorious faith is that it takes sacrifice and discipline. You know, there's a bit of an overlap here, so let, let's take a look, you know, another look at verse 25 as well as 26. And it says, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. You know, this strict training that Paul talks about here, you know, you know takes sacrifice. It, it requires discipline. You know, think about it. You know, el elite athletes, they, they all know that success doesn't happen overnight. You know, they have self-discipline. You know, they, they have it, and, and, and they, they, they exercise it to put in, you know, early morning training sessions to sacrifice, you know, social activities in exchange for more practice. And they power through sore muscles and exha exhaustion. You know, I remember, you know, a time where, you know, way back when, when I was at college and, and I was in Colorado Springs for this training camp and, you know, we, 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 we ran and we did all this cardio in the morning. We, we got on the mat in the afternoon and there was this one guy that I hadn't, you know, I had just met and, and I kind of asked, you know, who was this guy? And, you know, because at the end of our workouts, he would be in the weight room, you know, like, and, and I'm like, man, let's go to lunch or let's do, or let's just go to dinner. And, and he's there doing power cleans. He's doing all of these things. And, and, I, and I would think like, you know, what was the deal? And then I had, you know, talked to one of the coaches and, and he actually had won a couple of, you know, NCAA championships. And so, you know, he, th that's why he was there and, you know, myself and maybe another other two guys were really on the other side of the spectrum, you know, because I, I just wanted to just kind of get through the workout. I wanted to survive the workout. You know, in Hawaii, I thought I was pretty good and then, you know, I was in pretty good shape. But when I got to Colorado Springs, you know, like, man, it was like I couldn't even run a mile because of the elevation. And so I just felt like I wanted to just survive where there were people at a whole nother level that were just like, they didn't want to just finish the workout. They wanted to, to excel and to exceed and to move past that. You see, and this is, you know, these elite athletes, they power through. They also, you know, what they also do is they practice self-discipline when it comes to their diets, making sure they not only fuel their bodies with the nutrients, nutrients necessary to, to kind of have optimal performance, you know. That's another area that for me fell right away. You know, I fail all the time. They also make sure that they avoid practices that hinder recovery, you know, and inhibit the next training session. You know, so really they, they don't go out late at night. They feel like sleep is so important because it, it aids the recovery. So these, these are the sacrifices they make. When everybody else is having fun, when everybody else is doing the, these other things, they, they sacrifice, they, they exercise discipline. You know why? Because they want to maximize their performance. They understand that, you know, that this thing, you know, that their, this performance only comes through hard work, sacrifice, and discipline. The same is true for those, I believe, who desire a victorious faith. You see, they, they're intentional about setting aside time for the Lord. Meaning that if they set up a time, that they will meet him there. You know, it's not something that, well, if I have time, I'll do it. If, 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 if things let up or if my schedule opens up or, or if I'm not tired, then maybe I'll, I'll spend that time with the Lord. No, it's saying that, man, if, if this is important, if I set up a time and that time happens to be at, at 5, 6, or 7 in the morning and I realize that I'm not a morning person, then maybe I gotta go to bed earlier. You know, if I realize that I'm not functioning at my optimal performance, then maybe it's at this time, and, and I, I, I better be there. Setting aside that time, meeting with Him. 
You see, because they realize that a Christian, a follower of Jesus is only as strong as the foundation that they stand on. Now understand that it's not only the, the spiritual disciplines that they, don't, you know, those who want a victorious faith that, that they make time for, but they're also disciplined about avoiding temptations. You know, temptations in life that may trip us up or, or hinder our spiritual growth. And, and I think we all kind of know ourselves well enough that Man, you know, if, if going here is going to cause me to stumble, then, then I have a choice. You know, I, I can, and, and it may be fun, but I may have to sacrifice that. I may have to be, live a more disciplined life and, and, and maybe spend life in this area here. So you see, sacrifice and discipline they're key to a victorious faith. And finally, having a victorious faith requires a strong finish. Let's take a look at verse 27 again. It says this, No, I, I strike a blow to my body, and I make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. You know, we talked about this earlier. You know, what Paul is referring to here, you know, like that he, that this eternal prize, this joy that's found in leading someone to faith in Jesus. But also the reward of God's, you know, approval, his, his, his blessing, his, his finding us faithful. And Paul, he, he understands God's purpose for his life. And, and because of that, he's, he's exercised discipline. He's, he's sacrificed. But he doesn't want to let up. Okay? You know, he, he's encouraging others not to, to let up. You know, and, and here he's encouraging them to finish strong. You know, although I believe these words are, are somewhat self-explanatory, let me share some advice from philanthropist and, and uh, this uh, financier, Warren Buffett. He says this, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. If you think about that, you'll do things differently. You see, in other words, starting fast, and strong, you know, in the beginning it is not a bad thing, but if we fizzle out midway or at the end, you see, that's what people remember. You know, that's the witness we tend to leave with those around us. You know, take a moment to digest that. You know, Paul is saying that he doesn't he doesn't want to be disqualified for the prize. He doesn't want to, to get up one morning and, and realize that, that all of that hard work, you know, the, the, all of that sacrifice and all of that discipline, you know, all of that was just flushed down the toilet because of a poor decision, you know, or a shortcut taken or a lapse of judgment that led to a moral failure. He doesn't want to be disqualified. So his, his encouragement is to finish strong. The Christian faith, as you've often heard, is, is not so much a sprint as it is, you know, this marathon, this, a distance race to be run. You know, to be run in such a way, as Paul puts it, to attain the prize. But I believe the emphasis here is on the way we run, the way we choose to live out our faith. So if we desire a, a victorious faith, we need to be intentional about the way we choose to live and, and not let up, not, not relax. 
or cut corners, but to finish strong. And let, me, let me share this um, as we wrap things up. You know, over the, the course of this past year, you know, I watched a, a, lot, of, a lot of TV. And, and, you know, if I'm honest, um, I watch a lot of TV naturally. You know, and my wife is laughing. But, I, okay, I watch a lot of TV. You know, I probably watch more TV than the TV guide. You know, it's kind of like I, I do that. But this last year, because of the stay-home order and all of these things, I actually watched, if it's possible, more TV. Okay? So, and <clears throat> I watch all kind of things, right? You know, I, I'm not... You know, don't limit myself to any one genre. And, and, and so on one, this one particular day, for some reason, I, I was watching the NFL. We have the NFL channel, so I was watching that, right? You know, and, and they were doing these repeats, this, you know, because like, it was things. That, and, and it was these, this series of documentaries, you know, on, on different football players or coaches. The, the series is called A Football Life. And so I'm kind of really into it. And, but I kind of got hooked on it this one day. And I, I literally spent almost the whole day watching all the whole thing. I mean, they got like six or seven seasons. I, I probably knocked out like four or five in that one day. You know? And I just kind of was like watching, after, you know, over and over. And, and one, you know, as much as I enjoyed all of it, there was one individual that really intrigued me, so much so that, you know, they did a two-part documentary series on this guy. So he, there was, instead of one hour, there was two hours on him. And, and so I was, you know, kind of thrilled by that. You know, I went, I saw part one and then part two, and I saw it, and I was like, wow. You know, this was kind of, you know, it was kind of amazing. And it was about this guy that really, you know, you know he loved football. He participated in it, you know, he played. And, you know, he, he wasn't bad, but he wasn't good enough to make it to the league. You know, to, he wasn't good enough to play professionally. And, and so what he did was, you know, he was trying to figure out what, what should I do. You know, he went back to school after college, went to law school. That didn't, you know, pan out for him. And so he went into coaching. You know, he was, started out as an assistant coach at the high school level, and then he moved up and he was a head coach at the high school level, and, you know, he enjoyed that. Then he actually got opportunities to serve as an assistant coach at the college level at Fordham and at West Point, you know, and, and eventually he got an opportunity to be an assistant coach at the professional level, and that led to a head coaching position, which he's probably best known for because he rose up the ranks to become the head coach of the Green Bay Packers, you know. And, and the coach was Vince Lombardi. So he's kind of the, 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 one of the greatest coaches of all time. The Super Bowl trophy is named after this guy, you know. And, and the reason why he's considered possibly the greatest coach of all time is not because, well, he never had a losing season. So that, that's one thing. And I think, you know, most coaches would, would dream of that. But the other thing about him was that his ability to inspire, to motivate every athlete under him. You know, he, he led them into battle, you know, and he, and, and he would give these speeches that were just amazing. You know, I mean, if, if you weren't feeling it that day, you know, you get into the locker room that morning, he goes off, he starts giving his speech, you know, the football players would literally run into the wall for him after those speeches. So, you know, this is kind of the deal. And, and, and so, you know, he, he has all these, uh, you know, these, these speeches that he's given, you know, and if you go online, you'll find a lot of them. They're all over the place. But during his years as a head coach, he, he delivered all of these things. But there's one that, to me, kind of stands out. Well, there's a bunch that stand out, but I, I really felt like this is one of them that I really thought was amazing. <clears throat> And it was, you know, this speech called, you know, that he, that they, that they gave it a title, you know, what it takes to be number one. You know, and, and so I thought I'd read that for us because it's a, it's a bit brutal in some places, but I, I think it's applicable um, here. And so, you know, we're going to kind of jump right into that. But, but this is Vince Lombardi's words. He says this, winning is not a sometime thing. It's an all the time thing. You don't win once in a while. You don't do things right once in a while. You do them right all of the time. Winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. 
There is no room for second place. There is only one place in my game, and that's first place. I have finished second twice in my time with Green Bay, and I don't ever want to finish second again. There is a second place bowl game, but it is a game for losers played by losers. It is and always has been an American zeal to be first in anything we do and to win and to win and to win. Every time a football player goes to ply his trade, he's got to play from the ground up, from the soles of his feet right up to his head. Every inch of him has to play. Some guys play with their heads. That's okay. You've got to be smart to be number one in any business. But more importantly, you've got to play with your heart, with every fiber of your body. If you're lucky enough, to find a guy with a lot of head and a lot of heart, he's never going to come off the field second. Running a football team is no different than running any other kind of organization, an army, a political party, or a business. The principles are the same. The object is to win, to beat the other guy. Maybe that sounds hard or cruel. I don't think it is. It is a reality of life that men are competitive, and the most competitive games draw the most competitive men. That's why they are there to compete. The object is to win fairly, squarely, by the rules, but to win. And in truth, I've never known a man worth his salt who in the long run, deep down in his heart, didn't appreciate the grind, the discipline. There is something in good men that really yearns for discipline, and the harsh reality of head-to-head -head combat. I don't say these things because I believe in, brute, in the brute nature of men or that men must be brutalized to be combative. I believe in God. I believe in human decency. But I firmly believe that any man's finest hour, his, great, his greatest fulfillment to all he holds dear, is that moment when he has worked his heart out in a good cause and lies exhausted on the field of battle, victorious. You know, now this might sound a bit extreme, you know, but really this is also, I believe, in line with what the Apostle Paul is talking about, you know, in this passage that we, we, we just looked at. And so let's, you know, I want us to kind of relook at some of Lombardi's words here with a, a twist. And, and instead of, you know, as he refers to winning, you know, perhaps we insert faith. And, and let me, let's see what that looks like as we reread this first part, you know, with us and, and, and trying to insert faith in there because it will look like this. Faith is not a sometime thing. It's an all the time thing. You don't live for Jesus once in a while. You don't do things right once in a while. You do them right all of the time. Living out our faith is a habit. Unfortunately, soul is choosing not to. You know, I guess what I'm saying is that, you know, as many of us spend this afternoon watching these elite athletes leave it all on the field, you know, and, and, and as we watch them compete, you know, may we be reminded of the faith, this victorious faith that God desires from each and every one of us. You know, how he desires for us to run in such a way to attain the prize. Please pray with me. Our Father, we are grateful this morning, God, and, you know, for the fact that we can take in and observe amazing events like the Super Bowl, but also for the, the fact that we can come and we can worship freely. And so, Father, our prayer this morning, Lord, is that we would be people who choose to, to live and to to be victorious in your faith. 
And so, Father, we give you thanks for all these things, for we pray it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning. Did you realize that uh, running a race, what Paul was talking about, is very similar to our prayer life? You know, disciplined prayer life is very much like what Paul described in 1 Corinthians 9, 24-7. Running a race so that you may obtain the prize. You know, athletes practice day in and day out all day long. Runners who train every day to build speed, stamina. Running athletes don't benefit much out of the workout in the start of the race. Think about that. But they benefit the days working out at the end. After running for many miles, your body is all exhausted. You know, you're feeling dehydrated. Your legs are burning. Your lungs can't take enough oxygen. You feel like quitting. That is when those long hours of practicing and working out comes into effect. Your body and your mind is conditioned to go that extra mile, enduring the exhaustion and pain. You can tell yourself, keep going, keep going, you know, until you see the finish line. And you, when you see the finish line, you give it a final burst of speed, pushing to the finish line. You know, in my years of uh, running competitively, not marathon or anything, but just running with friends and all. And, you know, there is a competition part in it. And just seeing the finish line, I remember those days that we were just running and, you know, we picking up the speed and wanted, we just challenging each other and coming down to the very end of the line, just screaming, you know. And that wouldn't happen if we didn't work out in the beginning. You know, that's how our prayer life should be. We practice reading the Word and praying every day, many times a day. We will build up wisdom and a relationship with our Lord Jesus through praying. So when the times comes, when you're having a bad day, a bad week, a bad month, it stretches out to a bad year. Going home, being grumpy, picking it out on your family, picking out on your pet animal, your dog. You feel like a can getting kicked down the street. And worse than that, you feel like the world is kicking you around. And for some, being tempted by Satan. You know, you're thinking to yourself, why, what's happening to me? I quit. I'm done. I'm out of here. You know, where's the bottle? That's when all those days spending time reading the Word and praying is there to help you to endure whatever life is throwing at you. The Word is strong. The relationship with Jesus is strong. And you're able to endure the troubles in your life. You know, you keep pressing forward until you win the race. And Jesus is there waiting for you at the finish line. Let us use this time and let us bring our worship and honor to Jesus. I want you to close your eyes, block out that noise, focus your energy upon Jesus. And I want you to thank Jesus, Jesus for all he has done, coming into this world, giving up his life on the cross just so that we may be rescued, so that our sins are forgiven. Tell him how much you love him. Let us pray.
let us use this time to openly confess your sins. Sins that you are having a hard time controlling. No matter how hard you try to control these sins, it keeps emerging. Let's bring it to Jesus and let us pray. Let us use this time to bring your concerns. It may be for yourself, your work, your family, or your friends, or even our church here. It may be that you need to come closer to Jesus. Just ask Him. Let us pray. Will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for your unfailing love on us, your blessing, and your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness to guide us and see us through the times of uncertainty, for lifting us up and setting us on high. Thank you for your scriptures that remind us of your promise your plan, and your provision. Thank you for taking away our fears and our anxieties. Help us to be good stewards for, for what you have entrusted us with. Father, be with us as we go into this dark world. May we be your light and share the truth of the gospel. Help us to be disciplined in our walk with you to practice praying every day. Fill us with the love and the knowledge of knowing you. In your precious Son name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Have a great week.
for worshiping with us today, whether you're in person or online. Um, finish that race, finish strong, finish strong for Jesus. If you are here, please wait till the usher excuses you before leaving. And if you're online, thank you again. If you want to come and join us next week, please visit our website, www.fbcprocity.com to register. We'll see you again. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you.